Hi everyone, welcome to RA online. I am Dr. Priya Darshini Shanmugam, Professor of Microbiology. And in this class, we are going to see about the intestinal helminthic infections. In particular, we are going to see the cestoid caused infections, mainly intestinal teniasis. So, cestoids. So, we are going to talk about the classification of intestinal helminthic infections. Then, a little bit about the morphological features of cestoids. Cestoids are a form of worms. So, what type of worms they are? Then we are going to talk about the tenia solium morphology and life cycle, tenia saginata morphology and life cycle. Then we will also see the clinical features associated with intestinal teniasis, a little bit about the prevention of this intestinal teniasis and of course the most important in microbiology, the lab diagnosis of intestinal teniasis. So these are the learning objectives for this session. And now we will just quickly see the intestinal helminthic infections. So as the name suggests infections caused by helminths means worms, okay. And these intestinal infections caused by worms are very common and they form a very big proportion of the GIT infections. Other causative agents can be bacteria, you can have bacterial infections, you can have viral infections, protozoal infections and of course the worm infestations and we all know that worm infestations are quite common in the tropics as well as in the developing nations. The helminths or the worms can be classified as cestodes, trematodes and nematodes. Not only causing GIT infections but also causing other system infections. So when you say cestodes, the intestinal cestodes, what do you mean by cestodes? They are flat worms, okay and they are segmented and they are dorsoventrally flattened and because they are segmented, the body looks like a tape. So that is why it is known as tapeworm. So the common names for these cestodes are tapeworms and those tapeworms which cause infection in the GIT, that is the gastrointestinal tract are Diphilobotrium, Tenia saginata, Tenia solium, Hymenolepis nana and Diphilidum caninum. So today we are going to talk only about tenia saginata and solium but anyway I will talk to you about the other intestinal helminths. So another group of worms are the trematodes. So just like the cestodes are the tapeworms, the trematodes are also flat worms but they are leaf shaped and they are not segmented and they are called as the flukes. So the common name for these worms are the flukes. And the one occurring in the intestine is facial abscess busci, which is an intestinal fluke. Apart from it, you have blood flukes also. Why blood flukes are mentioned here is this schistosoma mansoni and schistosoma japanicum. They are present in the mesenteric plexus of veins of the gastrointestinal tract. And so they can cause a lot of GI symptoms including dysentery. So that is why they are included here. Then now if we go to the third category of helminths known as the nematodes. The nematodes means round worms. That means they have a, a cut section will be like a cylinder. Okay, it will be like a, it will be round. So that's why they are known as the round worms. A nema also means thread. So thread like round worms. And in them, we can classify them as those worms which are present in the small intestine and those worms which are present in the large intestine. So the small intestinal nematodes are Ascaris, commonly known as the round worm. Hookworm, under this you have two genus, Nicator as well as Ankylostoma and then Strongyloides. So these are present in the small intestine. And then you have the large intestinal nematodes such as Trichuris and Entrobius. They are present in the large intestine. Apart from these common nematodes affecting human beings, there are some intestinal nematodes which are infecting animals but of course we can also get human infections. Common examples are Toxocara as well as Angiostrongylus cantonensis. So this is the classification of the intestinal helminthic infections. So the next thing that we will be seeing is a little points, a few more points about the cestodes and then we will go on to the individual infections. So cestodes as already told, they are long worms, they are segmented, they are dorsoventrally flattened because they are segmented and they are flat, they look like tape. That means a measuring tape. So they are called as tapeworms. And based on the habitat, again these cestodes can be classified as intestinal cestodes and soft tissue cestodes. 
So, intestinal cestodes are those which are present in the human intestinal tract. So, already mentioned these names, you are familiar with Diphilobothrium species, Tinea solium, and Tinea saginata. Okay? And this Tinea solium, Tinea saginata, they all cause this intestinal teniasis. And then you have Hypenolepis species. And less common among these intestinal cestodes is Tinea asiatica, another species of Tinea, and then another species of Hymenolepis, that is Hymenolepis diminuta, and Diphilidum caninum. The somatic or the tissue cestodes are present in the human muscles or organs, but why it is mentioned here is, see in Tinea solium itself there is a larval stage known as cysticercus cellulose and this can occur in human beings and you can get the larva being deposited in the muscles that is the striated muscles, the CNS, the central nervous system as well as in the eye. And again echinococcus is a dog tapeworm that is the uh, here the definitive host that is the host who is harboring the adult form is the dog and man is only the intermediate host. But again you can get a certain hydrated disease that is you have cysts being formed in the liver, it can go to the lung and then it can go to anywhere in the body like bone, kidney and all that. So they are also caused by cestodes. Right. Now coming to the morphological forms of the cestodes. So this is a picture of a tapeworm and what you can see is uh, this is the adult worm. And uh, usual few points about the morphology is that we already saw that it is flattened dorsoventrally, it is long segmented and all that. And different tapeworms, the length can vary from few millimeter to several meters, okay, right. And what are the morphological forms of the cestodes? So the first form which we are seeing is the adult worm. So this is a picture of the adult worm. Another form is, as I told you earlier, in the soft tissues and all, you can get a larval form occurring or in the muscles. And then you have the eggs. So, three different morphological forms we have to remember for the cestodes.